G'day, Kieran from Solid Tech here. In this video I'd like to show you how to use SolidWorks RX, which is a great little diagnostic tool for recording and capturing any issues that you might be having with SolidWorks. So you can find it under your Start menu, All Programs, browse to your SolidWorks installation directory. I'm using SolidWorks 2011 today. Uh, and then SolidWorks Tools under that, and then SolidWorks RX. So once you launch it, you're taken to the Home tab. Uh, you can see that the first thing you should do here is try both of these options down the bottom. So close SolidWorks down and then click here to launch SolidWorks in software open GL mode. That's going to override or bypass your graphics card. Use the CPU to process the graphics instead. Um, the second option will bypass your registry settings. So when you start SolidWorks using this option, it'll appear like you've got a fresh install of SolidWorks. So if you're unable to reproduce your issue, using these modes then it points to an issue with your system you should obviously contact your support engineer will be able to help you out and fix up your computer now, assuming that you can actually still reproduce the issue using both of these modes you should then proceed on to the problem capture option so you can either click here or switch across to the problem capture tab uh, what we're going to do here now is we're going to record a video so it's going to start up a new session of SOLIDWORKS and it's going to start it's going to record a video as we go through uh, and use SOLIDWORKS if you happen to be experiencing random crashes with SOLIDWORKS so you can't actually predict or, or reproduce the error on demand you can just uh, uh, skip this uh, video recording option and just go through and describe the problem and that will pick up the journal file from uh, the previous session of SOLIDWORKS which will uh, hopefully indicate what caused the crash so just waiting for SOLIDWORKS to start up it's actually capturing some extra information like our Windows log files in the background so now that SOLIDWORKS is up and running, I'm going to run through and recreate this issue. I'm actually working with a live issue here today. Uh, so this is SOLIDWORKS 2011 Service Pack 4. And the issue is if I create a multi-body part and then use my draft analysis, it's going to crash SOLIDWORKS. So don't try this one at home. So if I hide that body and then use my draft analysis straight away, SOLIDWORKS is going to freeze. So once SOLIDWORKS freezes or crashes, uh, we'll be taken back into RX. If your issue doesn't cause SOLIDWORKS to crash, you can just close SOLIDWORKS down after you've finished. Uh, and once you do that, you'll again be taken back into RX where we can now describe the problem. So minimal detail is fine, just need to fill out some of this information, um, pick, a, pick a, the area that the issue is related to. This one is part related. Obviously pick the appropriate one for your issue. And then for the sub-issue, I could pick either draft or multi-body. I might run with draft for this one. I'm just going to edit out this typing, but obviously type some information in here. Okay, once you've finished, finished typing all of your steps to reproduce the issue, uh, you can put any extra information you need in here as well. Um, you also need to select an impact level. So we have uh, a few different levels. We've got critical, high, medium, low, and question. So critical is really if you start up SOLIDWORKS and it crashes straight away, or you go to do something um, for your, you know, whatever job you happen to be working on, and you know you just cannot get that work done at all. High is if uh, you try to use SOLIDWORKS for a particular function, and again, it's not working properly, but you might be able to get on with some other kind of work instead. Medium is uh, if a software, um, if a feature isn't working as you'd expect, so our issue is medium. Um, so it might be causing a crash, but obviously there are workarounds to get around this. So for, in, in ex for example, in this case, I can just click somewhere else uh, before I launch my draft analysis. Uh, low is if there's no actual loss of functionality. So uh, if there's no crashing or anything, it might just be a spelling error in an error message box, for example, or on a menu item. Uh, and then you can also use it to ask questions. So for example, if you've just got a random question, you can capture a video file uh, to help explain your question. And so you can just set it to question. Um, for the reason, I'm just going to use a little bit of the explanation here. So a software function is inoperable. It's good enough. Once I do that, I'm going to add some extra files. So you can add any files that were opened in the last session, or you can browse for extra files. Obviously, if you're displaying or documenting an issue with assembly files, you should include all of the assembly and part files as well. Uh, it's also going to capture all of these files as well, including that video file, uh, the Windows log files as well. And we can just click Package. So it's going to gather all those files into a zip file for us. And 
then we're prompted to save that zip file. So I'm just going to save it to my desktop. Once you do that, you can then click to browse the zip file location. So if you save it to somewhere else besides the desktop, um, you can then take it from Windows Explorer here. Uh, so once you do that, you can just drag and drop it into a new email message and forward it on to support. Uh, you can see here that this is less than 10 meg, so anything under 10 meg is generally okay to email. If it's larger than 10 meg, just let your support engineer know. We have other ways uh, for you to send these RX files to us if they're rather large. So that's, that's okay. Um, I just want to show you guys really quickly. This is a zip file. Um, and you can open it up with any zip application. I'm using 7-zip, which is a great little free open source zip utility. So you can see inside we've got a bunch of files. That's the video file. Uh, showing the problem. That's a journal file from the last SOLIDWORKS session that we had open. Uh, we've also got all those files that you might have been using. And we've also got extra information like you can see here information about my computer. Also the Windows log files which are useful if we're trying to track down particularly uh, difficult uh, issues. Just jumping back into SOLIDWORKS RX, I want to show you some of the other options as well. Uh, some of the other tools in RX. Uh, you've got the Diagnostics tab, so the very first option will tell you whether your graphics card is actually up to date. So if your driver is out of date, then you should actually see a download button. You can download the, the up-to-date driver directly from SOLIDWORKS RX, which is really, really nice. You just want to also work your way down the list. Make sure that you don't have any of these diagnostic test errors, any of the red X's. Uh, the yellow X is generally safe to ignore. Uh, you can see here it says Toolbox is loaded on a local drive. In my case, that's fine. Um, if you do have any of those red X's, obviously you should contact support and we can help you resolve those issues. You've also got system maintenance, so you can see here we've got our temp directories, so you can use SOLIDWORKS RX to clear these out. That should just uh, keep SOLIDWORKS sticking along nicely. You should do this every so often. And then on the add-ins tab, you can see we've also got this great little tool called the benchmark. So this is actually going to launch SOLIDWORKS with some standard part files and run some benchmarking. Um, so that will give you an objective score. Um, once you're finished, you should be prompted to upload it to the SOLIDWORKS website so you can compare it against other people's machines. Uh, it's also a really great way to compare different systems. For example, if you're trying to um, upgrade your systems for SOLIDWORKS at your company, so you can run this on, on a few different machines and see which one is actually going to work best for SOLIDWORKS. So that's an overview of SOLIDWORKS RX. Hopefully you found it helpful, and thanks for watching.